Hello everyone, welcome back to Better Biomed. It's a new year and I'm excited to bring to you a video that's a few years in the making. Today, we're going to discuss medical lasers. The reason this video is taking so long to produce is the rapid leaps in technology for all medical lasers. When I think I have a reasonable grasp on what I'd like to discuss, something very new and very cool comes to the market. To make this video easier and more future proof, I'm not going to cover many specific details on any laser type. This is going to be a general overview. Lasers have taken the medical field by storm. They're less invasive and they can easily treat areas that are inaccessible by scalpel. Laser beam can be focused, bent, and shaped, applied with a hand pendant, or transported through a tiny fiber optic cable. A medical laser can be the size of a toaster oven or even the size of a Volkswagen. The major differences in the types of lasers is the wavelength of the light beam that's generated and the frequency of the pulses of light. How these beams interact with the tissues determines how they're used to treat patients. Let's take a look at the various types of lasers you'll encounter. There's five general types of lasers. Type one is the gas lasers. The most common medical gas lasers are the CO2 and argon lasers. CO2 is an infrared laser, which is easily absorbed by water and soft tissue. The water is instantly vaporized and blood vessels are sealed. CO2 lasers are usually really tall with a turret at the top that contains mirrors and optics to guide the beam to its destination. CO2 wavelength is 10,600 nanometers, which is generally not very efficient to transmit the beam through fiber optics. Argon lasers are a blue or green gas laser that has a 488 to 514 nanometer wavelength. Argon lasers are often used in ophthalmic, ENT, and gastrosurgery, as well as vascular surgery. Argons can be used with fiber optics to reach tiny treatment zones. Type 2 are the fiber lasers. The most prominent fiber laser is the neodymium YAG, or just the YAG laser for short. YAG has a wavelength of 1060 nanometers, which makes it very versatile. These lasers are used for sealing blood vessels, ophthalmology, treating cancer, ENT, gastrointestinal, and urology surgery. YAGs can be a simple tabletop machine or a giant power-hungry roll-around laser. Type 3 is the dye laser. Dye lasers usually use an organic liquid dye as a lasing medium. The dye is a consumable. The advantage of dye lasers is the variety of wavelengths due to the type of dye and the ultra-fast pulse frequency of the generated beam. Dye lasers are used in dermatology, angioplasty, cancer phototherapy, cardiology, cosmetic surgery, and even urology lithotripsy. Type 4 solid state lasers. The most common solid state laser is the KTP laser, which uses a crystal that's pumped by a YAG laser to produce a green light at 532 nanometers. KTP is great at coagulating blood vessels for procedures like cystology and urology, but it's also excellent for dermatology topical treatments like tattoo removal, scar or freckle reductions, and even vascular lesions. Type 5 is the excimer lasers. Excimer lasers use a noble gas like argon, krypton, or xenon, and a reactive gas like fluorine or chlorine to create a powerful ultraviolet beam that can pulse an extremely high frequency. These lasers can remove exceptionally fine layers of surface material through ablation without damaging surrounding tissue. Excimer lasers are generally the largest lasers, but they can perform the most delicate of surgical procedures like eye surgery or angioplasty. Now you know the types of lasers, there's a few points of caution you should be aware of. Number one, Use correct laser safety goggles whenever you enter a room where a laser is turned on. The goggles have a specific wavelength engraved on them, and that wavelength is specific to a type of laser. A KTP goggle 
may not be appropriate for a CO2 beam. All medical lasers can and will damage your eyes in a microsecond. Please be careful. Number two, many laser beams are invisible. They can and will burn you or other objects if you cross their path. You might not feel the burn the moment it happens. Number three, do not aim lasers at reflective surfaces. It's a beam of light. It reflects. Ensure there's no stainless steel in the path of the beam, especially in operating rooms when you're setting up the laser. Number four, lasers are calibrated according to their wavelength. This often requires special equipment and knowledge. Most lasers are better to be serviced by a contractor. We consider that the cost of doing business with a laser. That's all I have guys. Thanks for watching this video on medical lasers. I could have easily made an hour long video on lasers and how they're used in hospitals, but this is just a brief overview. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up. 2020 is going to be a great year for medical technology, and I'll be releasing videos as fast as I can produce them. Thanks again for watching.